Hi guys, Tin Man here. Today we're going to be looking at a very simple adjustable power supply. Um, it's going to be a voltage doubler as well as a variable output voltage. Now for this, you're going to need your um, transformer, old mobile phone one or anything you've got lying around. Most of them are 12 volts um, and sometimes we require 24 volts and it's also very nice to have one that's adjustable. So this one's 12 volts at 500 milliamps so at 24 volts we'll get about 250 milliamps probably 300 because they underrate these a bit. So you'll need your power supply. Um, what you will have to do is split it take out the rectifier and the capacitor because um, most of them are a DC output and we want AC for this project so like I said this one's 12 volts 500 milliamps that's the one we're going to be using for this little demo we're going to need a couple of caps now because we're going to be doubling the voltage which will bring it to 24 volts um, and also with the voltage doubler we've found that it will pump the caps up to um, the double of the peak to peak AC output on the transformer not the RMS so if you are going to have 24 volts from your um, at the end of your voltage doubler you want to go to about 35 volt caps or higher um, also bigger your farad reading the better these ones here are um, you know, 1000 microfarads at 50 volts so they will do for this demonstration You're going to need yourself a couple of um, diodes these are just two 1N4004s um, pretty much well anything from a 1N4001 upwards will be quite fine and you see I put a little hook on them just because it's easy to slip over the terminals on the caps and solder them on a um, couple of chalky blocks to put the wires in of course some solder soldering iron now a pot, you will need a pot. Um, this one is a 10k 1 watt pot. Now you will need to know how much watts your transformer pull puts out as to how many watts you will need your pot to be. A, um, I've only got a 1 watt pot but ideally you would want a 5 watt wire wound pot anything from 5k to 20k and of course a couple of globes for our load and a tin of glue makes things really easy so first we're going to glue our caps on now with your caps of course you've got your negative side positive side when you glue your caps on just put the negative and positive together just makes it easier so we'll stick them on, a little bit of glue, one negative facing in, and one positive facing that. Now this is super glue, and if it gets on your fingers, your fingers don't come apart. Next our chalky blocks, put the glue on them. Stick one up this end. And then one down that end. What I should have done is actually had them around 90 degrees so I can get in there easier to put the wires in. 
Take your pot, a bit of glue on that. Stick it on as well. Also with your pot, just bridge two of the terminals to give you the full 10k white on the pot. So the next thing to do is put a bit of solder on your terminals, on your caps. Makes life very easy. Also on your pop terminals if you haven't done so. Some on the hooks of your diodes. Now for newbies at this, you'll see your diode's got a silver line on one end that indicates the direction of flow. Um, so that silver line in this case, the silver line will go to the positive of one cap. And the silver line will go away from the negative of the other cap. Now your two centre posts are simply connected together on the caps, negative to positive. Okay, we then take our two diodes and join the back end. Try and get them to sit nice and neat together. Put the solder on. Okay, now from the leg without the bridge on your pot, we're going to take, go from that leg to one of the centre posts of the cap, it doesn't matter which one because they're both joined together. So we'll go ahead and do that. solder it onto the leg without the bridge. It doesn't really matter but I'll just do it that way. Either way around is okay. Okay so next we're going to go from the middle of the two diodes into one leg of our AC input. in there, like I said I didn't leave myself much room here, so this is going to be a bit fiddly. So he's on, make sure we've got the wire and not the plastic, we'll be coating around the wire. Now from the centre we're going to go to our other AC leg. Give yourself a bit of water and do that. Actually we're not going to do that. From the centre we're going to go
take that off the center. My mistake. We're going to go from our pot because our uh, the leg of the pot is already hooked up to the center, so we're going to go from the pot to the other leg of the AC. Long night, a little bit tired. Him up. Now with your AC in, it's not polarity conscious, you can have it either either, but without DC out, of course it is. So from the negative to one, and then from the positive of the other cap to the other, it's going to be our two DC out. So we will use a brown wire for our positive out. It's got a nice big water solder on it. Plug him into our chalky block. or strip terminals as some would call them. Now this one must be shut. Just undo them a bit, make life a bit easier. Properly. Now we're going to need a little bit of water. I always tin my wire before I go soldering it on, it makes it so much better, so much easier. Put a bit of solder on them. Leave a little bit of a blob on it if you can. And it's just a matter of melting that blob and she goes straight on. So this bit of yellow gear here is going to be our negative. Okay, so that's it, pretty much well done. I'm going to use these two globes as our load. Um, I'll pay just to get a marker pen or something and write positive and negative on there so you know where you're at. So of course, it doesn't have to be plastic, a bit of wood, whatever you want to stick it on. Plug your load in. Of course this is a light globe so it doesn't really matter which way it goes around. LEDs it will, of course. Man that didn't go in at all. Try that again. Okay we're doing that time. Alrighty, so I have put the um, globes around the right way, although it doesn't really matter with light bulbs. Um, like I said, unless you're using LEDs, just make sure your wire is what the screw is screwing onto and not the plastic. So they all look okay. and get our meter and check all that which I will do because it's a very handy thing to do with electronics otherwise you may put it all together and go well this crap doesn't work so we'll just set that to our little buzzer make sure there's continuity so that one's alright 
Now we're going to plug our little transformer into the power. Once we get rid of that, and like I said, the input is not polarity conscious. Doesn't matter which way you put these wires in, of course, because it's AC. There, as you can see, it's working away there. What we'll do is put the meter up. And of course, we now have a DC voltage coming out. Like I said, that is polarity conscious. And we'll even take it off of amps, put in bolts. Because the dead short's not good. So I'm not sure if you can see that. Pop it up a little. So with the pot wound right down, we're getting 3.76 volts. And our little lights there are shining away quite dully. These are 24 volt globes. And as we turn the pot up, you can see our voltage starts to climb. Four volts, nine, ten, as you can see our lights are getting brighter and brighter. <clears throat> now you will notice that it's putting out 31.2 DC volts, even though our transformer was only 12 volts AC, and that is because it's converting the peak to peak AC voltage and not RMS voltage. So like I said, overrate the caps. If you go three times what your transformer is putting out, um, you will be safe. If you're going to be driving pulse motors and the likes, um, like I said, get yourself a five watt pot, wire wound pot, and go big on the um, microfarads on the caps. Uh, 10,000 microfarads would be really nice size caps for this system to run pulse motors. Uh, with that transformer like I said at full voltage there is only um, half the rated amps of the transformer because we're doubling the voltage so our wattage stays the same. So there you go, a very simple variable power supply. So just running over that, this is a 10k 1 watt pot, okay for little globes and that sort of thing. The other thing you will notice, um, even with the pot wound right down, if you do not have a load on here, these caps will still pump up to the voltage doubling voltage. As soon as you put a load on it, they will come back down. So. Make sure you've got a load when you go to measure your voltage, otherwise you're going to measure the full voltage no matter where the resistor is or where the pod is set at. So that's uh, my simple little voltage doubler come variable power supply. For those of you that want to test your pulse motors and that on variable voltages to see where it runs its best, and I have noticed on my pulse motors they have a certain voltage where everything seems to come into tune and they work their best so this is a handy little addition to the pulse motor and electronics collection um, just a very simple variable power supply alrighty uh, we'll see you next video cheers from the tin man